Hey guys, my name is Daryl Johnson. I'm an artist and pipeline manager for Quixel's Megascans. My experience as an artist includes working for Blur, Blizzard, Pluto Post, working on cool projects like Halo and Overwatch. I had a great opportunity after processing all the assets for a quarry pack to do an eye candy for it. I want to show you guys a breakdown on how I completed it. The first thing I do before I start any project is collect reference. Even though I'm matching something to an already taken photo, I still want to gather different reference around the net. This is the photo that we're going to be matching to, taken by Jan. These are a lot of the rocks that we scanned for a quarry pack for mega scans and the assets we're going to be using in this scene. I knew going into this project the grass was going to be a challenge for it, so I went ahead and collected more reference that depicted a lot of different types of grass. Maybe I would incorporate it, maybe I would take from it, especially for artistic use. You can never have too much reference as an artist. Even after this project is finished, I'm going to keep all of this reference and store it for later use. Now that I'm done with all my reference, let me close this down, let's slow it up 3ds Max. We're going to go ahead and start to block out our scene for our project. So we're going to go ahead and start importing some assets from Bridge. We're going to go ahead and open it up really quick. All right, here goes some of the assets that I have. I have some surfaces, some atlases, some rocks. Uh, we only need the uh, rock for right now just for a quick example. I'm going to go ahead and click on it, and it's going to be indicated right next to the export button with the number one. We're going to hit scripts. We're going to go to max. We're going to export to Redshift 3D. Here we're going to have dialog box for export options. We can choose from different texture size, different file types. But the most important thing for our blocking out, we're going to go ahead and select our model and make sure that it is a game master, which is LOD zero, which is low poly for us. That's all we really need. Let's go ahead and hit export. Easy as that. Close this down. Open up max. My import window is waiting for me. Asset is there. All I have to do is hit import. No special settings and we're all set. You know what's great about Bridge is that it imports the material already ready for you. So all you have to do is hit the render button, you're done. Let's go ahead and hit up the material editor. And right here, we already have a material already set up. Um, just for notice, displacement is in there, but it is checked off by default in case you wanna use it for something else, add a little bit more detail. So we're gonna go ahead and do a quick render. Let me go ahead and frame this up. All right, something nice. It's a simple scene. Right now, I only have one Redshift Sun, so it's nothing spectacular. But just to show you guys right out of the box, we can achieve photo real quality. This really helps out if you're doing previs and you can show your director or your supervisor a more final look, even in previs, to see what everything's looking like without uh, bringing in something high poly or high texture. So this is really useful, especially for production and also for game studios. The UVs and topologies on our assets are ready out of the box for production. I know personally, this can cut down on prep time on a project just to get started. The render looks good. Looks like from here, we can go ahead and start moving around our assets for uh, blocking it out. I think I'm gonna load up my other project that already has some of my rocks for my initial blocking out. Give me one sec. There we go. I knew when I started blocking this out, we didn't have all the rock scan, so I couldn't get it 100% the same as the reference photo, but I still want to pull off the same density, stacking, and composition that we have in the reference photo. Let me prepare the rest of the scene really quick. Almost set, let me cut some of these layers on. And these are all low poly assets, so this is gonna help me navigate and move around my scene a lot better. I'm going to do a quick render really quick so we can take a look and see what our rocks are looking like early on. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to the final render so you guys don't have to wait for it. I mean, I know it's only a minute, but let's keep it moving along. So the great thing about all of this is that it looks good, it's consistent, and um, the framing's right. So now we can actually move on to our foliage, you know, which we're using Forest Pack for to scatter around. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to use Forest Pack, but more how I used Forest Pack to layer my grass and my different types of plants, dead grass and all that. So we're gonna go and open up bridge. You see we have our atlases right here. Um, they come with an opacity map. So it's the exact same way, just like an asset. All we have to do is click it, go ahead and go to scripts, export max to redshift atlases. From here, we're gonna have the same dialog box. You see our opacity map, some of the maps have changed. 
we're going to go ahead and use the same subfolder and go ahead and hit export. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel since I already have one set up. Instead, I'm just going to show you how I prepped my uh, atlases for Forcepat. My assets are already set up and organized in a way it makes it a lot easier for me to select them when using Force Pack and adding them to a system. Right now, I really want to mainly talk about my grass blades and how I can get extra mileage out of customizing each blade, whether it's bent, whether it's turned, or it's laying down. It's just as simple as adding a bid modifier, moving some verts around, and Doing this, you're going to get a lot of mileage. You're going to be able to go ahead and customize so you can get more unique looking grass when you up the density inside your forest pack system. This kind of work can be tedious, but it's going to make our scene feel a lot more photoreal and make our grass look a lot less uniform than just taking the out of the box grass blades and just scattering them and adding a transform on it. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick test render. Let me go ahead and frame this up. Um, the one thing I do want to say about my atlases with Redshift, and I don't want to say this about any other renderers, I am using a Redshift sprite node for my opacity maps. That's going to definitely cut down on my render times. Right now, I want to talk about Forest Pack and how I use it to scatter all my grass and plants to get a layered and customized look. And for this project, I uh, broke up my Forest Pack into two sections, my foreground and my background. Um, and when I started, I started on my foreground first because I knew if I can get my foreground working, the background would come pretty easy. I have almost 30 forest pack systems to help me control where all my grass and plants go. And to really pull off that real look, I really needed to layer up my grass from the dead to the thatch to the bent to the tall. And for this, I had to go back to my reference and find out what I was missing. And right here, when we look at back at our reference, we notice there's different species of grass, different colors of grass. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this up a bit so that we can get a better visual for it. So right off the bat, I see some white top plants, and maybe it's a grass seed, I'm not sure of the species. I see some tall grass, some bent grass. Uh, the one thing I do see is the dead grass. The dead grass is laying underneath the grass that's alive. And if you notice, it's everywhere. And um, this, these small details really make the, the scene pop. Whether you may not notice it, without it, it would seem pretty obvious. <laughs> and just because I'm matching this reference photo, I still like to bring in other reference from the web so that I can get a little bit more customized look. Maybe I change it a bit. Maybe I see something in another photo that might add a little bit flair to my scene or a closer look at some of the plants that I can't see in my reference. And I know you've heard it a hundred times, but reference, reference, reference. If you have a folder at home or if you're at work, just have a folder full of reference. You see something cool in the neck, collect it. I have a folder here full of reference. It only helps me become a better artist. So let's go ahead and open up one of my forest pack assets. And as we notice, I've got all of my assets loaded up in one of my systems and they're all different varieties of plants. I don't want to get too far into force pack, but one main thing that's going to help you customize is your transform. Being able to rotate, change scale, and change the seed so it's all randomized is definitely going to help out. So let's go ahead and begin to turn off some of these layers. We're going to go down to the base layer and then work our way up. Right now, I'm looking for the dead grass. The dead grass is going to go underneath all the grass that have spotty areas that don't get sun. If there's any spots that we forget to fill in, we'll see the dead grass and it'll just make it look even better. So here we go. Here's the dead grass. Here's some of my um, cards of dead grass. And then also we need to go ahead and get the geometry grass. We're gonna start off with the dead thatched grass. And like I said, this is gonna be a coverall. What's gonna help with this, any grass that I forget to fill in with taller grass, or spots that I want to see through to the dead grass, this is going to definitely help out the scene. On top of that, we're going to go ahead and add the full grass. Now, the way that I added this inside a force pack, I went ahead and used a custom paint option so that I can actually make a layer and paint in all of my grass. What's great about this is I can look at my scene through my camera and paint in grass where I want it. Um, this is going to be a lot more useful than using splines or just uh, using it onto a surface. This actually helps me a lot to visualize where I want grass to be. It's pretty easy. I can just turn it on and off and make multiple layers under one system, which is great. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get back and start turning on some of the other layers. I'm gonna turn on some of the tall grass and the tall grass, I just sprinkled around the area just to kind of give it a little bit more variation. And let's go around to the plants in between the rocks. So thinking real world, some of the plants between the rocks, there's going to be areas of plants where there's going to be some that are dying and they're going to be a brownish color. So I have a layer of that. I could just put those in there. There's also another layer of plants that are inside the crevice that are underneath everything that are just completely dead. Uh, we may not see this in the viewport, but it being a 4K image, we can zoom in and check it out. I even went as far as putting in clovers underneath some of the grass and the plants, which we definitely may not see, but it's there just in case. All right, let me go ahead and start turning on the rest of these layers. And we're gonna go ahead and begin to do a test render. I know this test render is gonna take a second because I have most of my assets in the scene. So to process all my textures because they are 4K and 8K textures is gonna take a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to the render. All right, let's go ahead and pull this up. Uh, well, the first render's done. It looks good. I really do like it. Uh, it's the foreground. We're not worried about the background right now. If we can get the foreground again, we can push it to the background, no problem. Let's zoom in. Let's take a look at some of the details. I see some of the dead grass there. I see some of the uh, white tops over here, some of the tall grass, all the little small things that makes this uh, photo look a little more real. Let me go ahead and pull up the reference photo so we can kind of compare some of these features. As you can tell, you know, we can see the white tops that we added, some of the tall grass, some of the gray spots. I mean, all these things kind of help bring and marry the reference to our renders. And again, I'm not too concerned about the background because I know if I can get the foreground looking good, I can always do the exact same thing to the background. The background's just a larger scale. What really helped me out with resources and render time with this is the fact that this is a static image. So when I was filling in the background, because of perspective, I can actually just place grass in the areas that I only saw on camera. <laughs> And I understand this isn't always the case where the scene may be a 360 or maybe part of a video game, but this type of optimization closer to your final render is only going to help you out because the last thing you want is crazy render times. And I know you guys noticed that my scene is starting to chug. That's because I'm putting more and more assets, more and more force packs. I have so many systems in here. I know it can be overwhelming sometimes, but sometimes it's you have to work with when you're working in production. We're going to go ahead and move on to lighting. I'm going to only light my hero rocks at first, only because I want to go ahead and get quick renders for you guys so we can get some fast results. All right, let me go ahead and turn off some of the force pack so we can move a little bit faster in our scene. All right, there we go. Let me go ahead and zoom out. My lighting scenario is just one sun right now. It's just a redshift sun with uh, some of the default settings. I think the only thing I did change was the intensity multiplier. The one thing I will recommend is turning on the redshift physical sky. What this is going to do is going to turn on your background map inside your environment. And just like a day night system, depending on the direction that I change my sun, I can get something like morning, noon or night. And this helps me find some really interesting lighting scenarios. Since I already have the lighting set up, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick render for you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to the final render so we can check it out. And here we go, right out of the box, the Redshift Sun system really does provide some really good results. And I do believe in my final render, I did change my sun quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my final scene. And before we go ahead and start doing the final renders, we're going to go through one more step, and that's my jewelry pass. After I feel a scene is near completion, I like to take a step back where I can add really fine detail. This consists of me hand placing small assets that make a scene less perfect and more chaotic, leading to a more photographic feel. Let me go ahead and pull up the reference photo so I can show you a small example of what I mean. So there are small details in this picture that really add a certain nuance to it. Uh, if it wasn't there, you wouldn't notice it, but if it is there, I think it would just bring it more to life. And I know I went over this a little bit about scattering using my force pack, but I'm talking about the finer details. For example, with this scene, there are actually a lot of single dead blades of grass just hanging out. 
there's some coming out of cracks of rocks. There's some that are in front of rocks. There's some that are bent, laying down. They're not obnoxious enough for me to notice them, but they're there to add another level of realism. The key is not to go overboard, but just enough so that you notice them so it adds a little bit more to the composition of your final render. As I started rendering in 4K, I started to realize that there's a lot more detail and there's a lot more things that I can see. So the plants in between the rocks, I actually went ahead and put some more dead plants underneath them because at 4K, all you're gonna do is zoom in and now you can see some of these dead plants. And these extra details really bring these renders to life. And after I'm satisfied, I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing for my final render by cutting on my background force pack and also start switching out some of my low poly assets for my high poly assets. This is when optimizing your scene is gonna really help you out by taking out some of the big things that you don't need, like using low poly assets for the background and my high poly assets for my hero pieces. And now that we're ready for final render, let me go ahead and go over some of my render settings. Um, I'm gonna first go ahead and change my render resolution. Okay, 4,000. And I did make this custom framing. And then we've got our sampling. Sampling default is at four and 12. I made it four and 124, and I know this is a bit extreme, but with my 1080 Ti, I really want to test it, and I didn't want any problems. So your samples may change depending if you have depth of field on or your resolution is a little bit different. Next is my trace step, which is mainly for my redshift sprite node and the opacity map. If you're starting to see artifacts, you're gonna wanna up this a bit. Next up is my GI. I have brute force, brute force, and also the number of bounces is set to two by default. You can increase this, but remember this is gonna also add to your render times. Now that I'm satisfied with my settings, I'm gonna go ahead and start my final render. Um, I'm gonna skip to the final render because this scene has multiple maps and all of them are 8K. It's gonna take probably about five minutes to load all these up into cache, but I think we're gonna be happy with the final result. All right, our final image. Looks like it finished rendering and just in at 35 minutes. Full samples, looks good. I do know my final image, I did do a little bit more tweaking, changed my samples to 128, and also I messed with my color threshold to get a bit cleaner, less noisy image. So I think my final was at 0 .003. And changed the sun direction a bit just to get a little bit more artistic feel before bringing in a Photoshop to do final color correction. Let me go ahead and bring in the final color corrected version for you guys to take a look at. I'm really proud to show you guys this. I did notice, because I already did all the legwork for the scene with Forest Pack and all my assets, I noticed I can actually create a whole new camera, push in a bit, and almost create an entirely new composition with the current scene that I already have. So let me go ahead and close this out. Let's take a look at the scene. I'm just gonna change my camera. I didn't have to do too much work after this. I did have to add a little bit more Forest Pack because there are some areas that we didn't see from this angle. And other than that, all I had to do was change the framing, hit the render button, and I was all set. You guys can check out all the images I created with this scene in full 4K of my art station under D. Johnson Art. I just want to thank you guys for joining me for this breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. Hope to bring you another one soon.